Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Port Wyneme Water Agency regular meeting. I'm calling this meeting to order at 4 p.m. Madam Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Member Bouchard? Present. Member McQueen LeJean? Here. Member Perez? Here. Vice Chair Debley? Here. And Chair Hernandez? Here. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Um, do we have any public comments? No public comments. All right. Um, let's do the agenda approval for the water agency. May I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Two. Second. Thank you. Did you get those? Yes. Okay. Um, can we uh, take a vote? Yes. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. We have no presentations, so let's go on to the consent calendar. Uh, we'll now consider the items um, listed under the consent calendar and we'll enact in one motion unless an agency member has a request to remove any item for discussion. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm willing to move to approve, but I, I, I'd just like to ask maybe a question on, on item three, uh, which is the five-year on-call uh, professional services agreement. I'm prepared to approve it. I just want to ask a question. Okay. Um, it, it looks as though the city went out to bid, and so now it's going to be combined and I have no problem with that procurement process in and of itself. I guess my concern comes from uh, oftentimes, right, you get engaged with a contract or something that may just start to blend the lines. Uh, what protocols or does the city have in place to ensure that PHWA is not picking up additional costs that maybe at that blended line where city projects, PHW, a projects would kind of blend themselves together. Um. Chair Bouchard, um, so the way I understand it is, uh, being that the city is operator of PHWA, we're able to piggyback off that RFP process, which you mentioned. Um, so I just wanted to bring this as a, just a receiving file, um, in case we did bring any, any on-call consultants uh, for any future projects. Um, and that was the whole idea behind it. So. Um, maybe we should, if we have further discussion, maybe pull it. But we can, if we want, we can bring it back as a separate item for PHWA only. Um, we can do that. Well, I think um, what I'm hearing is maybe a request that might be a couple departments working together to come back and explain, probably our finance and public works teams coming back and explaining sort of how we track those two things and how we keep them, make sure we're um, keeping them sort of separate and not blending the agencies. So um, I think my thought would be we had put it on as um, a sort of a receiving file to let everybody know that we had just gone through this process. Um, so we can pull that and then we'd come back at a future meeting to have finance and public works sort of walk through what safeguards we have in place, I think is really the question, right? So, so we can do that. I will uh, move to improve the consent calendar in its entirety at this point. I'll second. I, uh, can I assume there's a direction to, on the next meeting, we'll explain, we'll come back with an answer to that question. Please. Yeah. Can we take a vote, Madam Clerk? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. No public hearings on today's agenda. Let's move on to business items. Um, item number four is the PHWA monthly operational report, and I believe we have staff here to present. Thank you, Chair Hernandez. Good afternoon, board, staff. So I'll be presenting the operational report for the month of October. Um, I'll go through our October water purchase numbers, and then I'll touch on the end of the water year because we didn't meet last month. So I'll go over end of water year allocation, where we fell, and then a couple projects that we have going at the PHW facility. So for the month of October, uh, water purchase from United, 292 acre feet, or 89% of our supply. Um, and then Cayagas, 37 acre feet, and 11% of the supply. So the Cayagas uh, purchase is con continues to stay down. Um, again, and that's our goal as, as operators. Um, here's our, our split. So this is United to Cayagas. This is water year. Um, again, our state water, it's still, it's staying down. And this is kudos to the operators, keeping that plant running 24 seven. 
um, we're maximizing our groundwater take, and this, that's evident here on this chart. So even some months we're in single digits, which is all, all good things. Um, here's our two-year consumption comparison. Um, this is United Water. As you can see, the demands continue to stay down. Uh, even with the city going but rolling back the water conservation measures from level two to level one, we're still seeing demand staying down um, continuously. And then here's Cayagas. Uh, this one, again, kudos to the operators. We're, we're really maximizing the groundwater, and you can see it here. Um, it's a lot lower than in the future year. And again, that's the goal moving forward. Can we go back really quick and I ask a question? What happened in February? So that was, yeah, two years ago, we had an electrical failure um, at the plant. So the main breaker went out. And so we were on Cayagas for, I believe it was seven weeks. So that's why that. So here's our actual end of water year, um, what we purchased from United. So th the number on the top, uh, that's our take or pay allocation, 3467, and we purchased uh, 2973 acre feet. So we're getting closer to that number, and again, that's the goal. We're trying to minimize that take or pay penalty, and we're kind of working in that direction. And then there's a project I'll, I'll touch on uh, later, and which will get us even closer to that goal. So we have an allocation. So for last year, um, our allocation is 3901, uh, and then we had a carryover of 654 acre feet. Um, and again, so our utilization we use about 76 percent, or 2,973 acre feet. Here's our member agency slash customer monthly consumption. As you can see, the city is our our biggest customer, um, and then. Coming in second is the Beach District and then the, uh, both Navy bases. And these numbers are pretty consistent month to month. They don't change a whole lot. Uh, SDI, so this is a daily sample we take every morning at the treatment facility. Uh, this is uh, giving us a number on iron and manganese coming into the plant. Um, this number has been pretty low with all the rains. Uh, United Water is running their shallow, shallow wells, so the SDI tends to stay down. Um, United did have their ribbon cutting a few months back. Um, that facility is is complete, but it's not online. They're just running it to test right now. So there's no need for them to run it at this time. So just wanted to share that information. Uh, the new SCADA system. So in 2019, uh, the 2019 facility master plan was approved by the board. Uh, the new SCADA system was one of those items. This was started about two years ago, kind of got stalled out uh, management. We had some turnover. Um, proud to say now it is complete. We're on the new SCADA system, 100%. Uh, works well, really no bugs. It's uh, the operators like it. So, so far, so good. And then I just included some information on what SCADA is just for maybe some of the newer, newer members. Um, but I won't bore you with all that information. And then the low flow pump project. So this is another project that was identified in the 2019 uh, Water Master Plan. Um, it was a high priority project. So this is gonna allow us to really maximize our groundwater take and minimize the state water, the expensive uh, purchased water. So this project was, we kind of got some preliminary proposals. Um, it was coming in pretty high, just for design, it was coming in like at 50, 50K. So I got with our city engineering staff. Um, we designed it in-house. The construction is done. Um, we're about $9,500 into it. The construction is done. Um, there is some electrical that still needs to happen, but we're hoping to get out, you know, complete this project for about $25,000. The original bids are coming back at $220,000. So just wanted to share that. Yeah. And again, this project is going to allow us to maximize groundwater and, and kind of uh, get that delta to move in the other direction with the take or pay penalty that we pay every year. So this is a simple project, but, but very important. And um, we hope to complete this within the next two months. So, and that's all I have for the ops report. I answer any questions. Hey, thank you, Mr. Martinez. Sounds like you brought us some good news.
this afternoon. Does anybody have any questions from staff? Yes, member Shard. It, just to clarify, the, the 60 acre feet of water, that's monthly or annually additionally that we think that project will be able to do? That's annually. Annually, annually. okay. Okay. So just to give a, just a quick background, um, so during the winter time, um, we have issues with low flow because our booster pump station is oversized. Um, United has the same issue. They just dropped a bunch of money into projects to, to deal with that. Um, so during the winter time from about 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., we have to go on kayak as 100%. So with it, once this project is complete, that's going to go away. We'll be able to use our groundwater um, all day long, 24-7. Um, we still will use kayaks at high demand times during the summertime, but um, it's just a good project, simple project, but all around a good thing for the for the facility. So, thank, thank you. That's uh, good, good to good to know and good job there uh, bringing that forward. Um, on the take or pay piece, uh, would you just remind all of us if if we don't purchase it? Is it bought at a per acre foot cost, or that's to backfill the fixed cost on United's proposed budget? And I, I think uh, General Manager Martinez, I think, gave us a lesson in this about a year ago, and I'm just trying to recall if I'm recalling that correctly. Yeah, so it's on an acre foot basis. So um, what, if we don't hit that number, that 3467 acre feet at the end of the water year, uh, we start getting billed in January over a six month period for every acre foot, in which I believe is about $363 an acre foot that we are billed. Thank you. Member Perez? So how much, can you estimate how much do you think this is going to save us now each year? Is there a, a figure? I would have to calculate that. I don't have that number now, but I can, I can bring that back. Okay, thank you. Any more questions from the panel here? No panel. All right, well, thank you very much. Keep up the good work. We'll move on now. Let's see, what do we need to do with this? Is this a receive and filed? Um, may I have a motion to receive and file, please? <clears throat> Move to receive. Second. Vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Oh, this brings us to the fluoride system, system removal. We. We're getting rid of a fluoride system and, and it's got a SCADA system. And so we've got new and old, new coming in, old going out, right? Okay. All right, so again, this is another project that was identified in the 2019 facility master plan. Um, just a little background. Um, so what is, why is fluoride used in water? So this is a practice known to help prevent tooth decay and reduce occurrence of cavities. Um, and then I'll, I'll kind of go through um, kind of the rationale and why staff thinks we should decommission fluoride. So we have two sources currently, United and Cayagas. Uh, both of these sources are coming in with fluoride. Um, there was a time when the plant first went online in 99. Um, so at that time, Cayagas was sending us fluoride, fluoridated water, but it was very low. And in 2004, MWD started fluoridating. So at that point, we were kind of in the optimal range without dosing at that time. Um, we are on the lower level, so the optimal range for fluoride is between 0.6 parts per million and 1.2 parts per million. Um, if we do decommission and stop dosing, we will be around 0.6 to 0.8 parts per million, which is well within range. Um, so just wanted to share that, and then I had multiple conversations with the state. Um, they're on board. They, they have gave, granted PHWA the ability to decommission. Um, on the operator side, it's a dangerous chemical to handle. So I think the operators, operators will appreciate um, eliminating this chemical. Um, and then there's a lot of time, uh, admin time used on monthly reports so that we can eliminate that. And then a cost savings about uh, $30,000 annually. So, um, and then neighboring agencies. So City of Oxnard, they, they do not uh, fluoridate. City of Camarillo, same thing, and City of Ventura. Those three cities do not add fluoride to the water. So I think this could be a bigger issue if we're removing fluoride completely. 
but with us not dosing, um, our customers are still going to benefit um, the use of fluoride. It's still going to be in the water, just at a slightly lower level. So I think that's, it's a no-brainer. I just wanted to share that information with the board. And this isn't a new idea. This was identified in the, in the master plan. So I'm just trying to implement what was kind of already approved at that point. So I'll answer any questions. I'm sure there'll be a few. Mm -hmm. Any questions for staff? Uh, yes, Mr. Martinez. Um, if we decommit, are we decommissioning the equipment or are we just turning it off? Uh, turning it off. So, and what would the consequence be if um, periodic monitoring demonstrated that we were below the 0.6? What would Division of Drinking Water require us to do? Yeah. So once we once we do the permit amendment with the state. Um, we're not required to be in a certain range at that point, even though we will be in optimal range. We're not required. If you're not dosing, you're not required to stay within range. If you drop down, it's not an issue with the state. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Member Burchard? I'd just like to thank you for bringing this forward. This this issue goes way back. Right. There, there was a time when Beach District board members would not even vote to approve the PHWA budget because fluoride was in it. So, it, yeah. Uh, and uh, so some time ago we had asked, knowing that those numbers were there. Uh, so I, I'm just pleased to see you bringing forward what have been initiatives that have been asked for to be done uh, for many years now, and I'm glad to see it coming forward. And just so the board knows, I actually uh, wrote a little bit of a paper on this back before I got, it, got, got educated on it. We're targeting less than 0.006% of the population who does not have access to dental care or in need of fluoride by putting it in the water. Um, there are issues that they know from a health standpoint for elderly folks and osteoporosis and other issues related to the higher dose of uh, fluoride in the water. And going way back when we started fluoridating water back in the 60s, you can go find this. It's, it's actually documented that the, the type of fluoride that we put in water and uh, uh, fluorosilic acid is not the same fluoride that you receive at the dental office or dental care. It's actually the byproduct of the production of manure. And okay. it's a class six toxin that the EPA recognized as the time had nowhere to put it and they decided let's put it in the water and we'll have a place to get rid of it and 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 so anyhow I'm pleased to see this coming forward and appreciate it thank you yeah thank you I, I love the history on that um Mr. Martinez did the other cities stop dosing for the same reasons or did they have other reasons for changes uh, to their fluoride program from what I understand, they they never they have never dosed the neighboring cities. From from what I understand, yeah, we're one of the only um, agencies that we're dosing. So, All right, very good. No more questions. Then uh, I'll entertain a motion and a second, please. Move to approve staff's recommendation. Oh, I didn't ask for public comment. Any public comments? No public comments. Go ahead, Member Bushard. I'll move to approve staff's recommendation. Second. We have a motion, a second. May we have a vote, please? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. We have a very short meeting. So um, I'd like to remind member agent, agency members that all requested items will require a motion and a second if you desire to uh, request a future agenda item. Does anybody have any reports, comments, or requests for future agenda items? Hearing none. I don't have any requests for, uh, it's just, just for future agenda items or opportunity to make it, comment? If this is comments, uh, okay. reports, and requests. I just ask uh, this board to um, indulge the Beach District in closing this meeting in, in honor of one of our staff members who we lost uh, tragically in a motorcycle accident in the Beach District uh, just over uh, two and a half weeks ago. Um, and uh, so if we could adjourn this meeting in honor of uh, Mr. Casey Dillon Johnson and indulge us in that. We'd appreciate it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and adjourn in memory of Casey Dillon Johnson. Um, um, we regret that loss and um, offer you our condolences. Um, the next regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, December 18th to 
2023 at 4 p.m. I'm adjourning the meeting now at 4.20 p.m. Thank you, everybody.